In this video, we'll look at different types of sampling. There are seven different types I'll talk about. The first type is called simple random. And simple random sample is where you choose randomly from the population. That's actually harder to do in practice than it seems. So for example, you could choose names from a hat. But if you do, you have to make sure that all the names in the hat are the exact same size and that the hat is well mixed. More often, with actual samples, they make a random number generator that randomly chooses people or items in the population. So what's simple random? Choose truly randomly from the population. Example, choose from a hat. Systematic sample is choose every nth object or person. So what do I mean by every nth? I mean every second or every third or every fifth or every hundredth or every seven hundred and second thing. So for example, choose every forty-fifth part on the conveyor belt. This is something companies will use and they'll take every specific nth thing. It might be 45th, it might be 90th, it might be 101st. It's up to them. A systematic sample, you choose every nth object. A stratified sample is where you divide the population into logical groups and then choose a percentage of each group. The most obvious example if you're a high school student is doing something like pick 5% of the grade 9's, 5% of the grade 10's, 5% of the grade 11's, and 5% of the grade 12's. And that way the population is divided into logical groups, I should say plural, and then those logical groups, you choose 5% of each of them so as to get a fair sample, that is, you get about the same distribution of grade 9s, grade 10s, grade 11s, and grade 12s of your whole school because you're choosing a percentage of each group. Cluster sample is divide the population into groups but then choose select groups. This one is really risky because it can really easily be biased. So for example, if you had computers in a bunch of different cities, you would choose a few cities and test all your devices. So this one companies will do if they can't maybe the computers are already out there, they can't recall them all, that would be way too expensive. Instead, they'll send testers to a few cities and test all the devices in those cities. But selecting those cities could end up being biased, so be really careful about using cluster, it can really easily become biased. Multi-stage is, is a combination of sort of sampling techniques. You can think about it as, as sort of a combination of the ones above. Here's why. A random sample is divided into groups. So make random groups this time. And randomly pe people into group A, into group B, into group C, and then choose randomly from the groups. So for example, make 10 equal groups and choose two from each. So here you take your random sample, it's like double randomized just to ensure it's sort of even stronger that we're getting a truly random sample. You'd randomly divide them into groups and then randomly pick from the groups. All of those first five are good, except cluster can sometimes go wrong, but the other ones tend to avoid bias if they're done right. But voluntary and convenience are almost always biased. In a voluntary sample, people choose 
to participate themselves. And that's a problem because you get certain characteristics that are likely to appear more often than not. For example, when you phone into a TV show, who's more likely to be represented? Well, it's people who have time and people who are more confident, people who can afford the phone charge. You end up getting a biased sample because only certain types of people will phone in and those types of people might not be the same percentages who call in that actually live in the population you're surveying. That's voluntary sample. When people choose to participate themselves, it ends up being biased. With convenience sample, that's where people are chosen because they are easy to access. So for example, the most obvious or striking example of convenience sampling would be to ask your friends. If you wanted to know what the school thought about a certain topic and you only asked your friends, you would for sure get bias because your friends tend to be people who think like you who act like you and will hold very similar opinions to you. Some might be different, but you'll get biased because this easy access of those friends, those people tend to have characteristics that are more in common with you and not reflective of the entire population. So those are the seven different types of sampling methods.